Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, My Need to Jet. So today I thought I'd do something very um, jet specific. So this video um, is really geared towards um, everyone who's thinking uh, of doing the JET program. Uh, more specifically, for those of you who have already applied, um, I was just seeing a lot of stuff go by online um, about the deadline coming up and um, I remember what it was like once I handed in my application and then waiting until the following year, like January, February, and I thought um, there's actually quite a few things that you know you can do during this time period while you're waiting for an answer, which hopefully will be yes. Uh, yeah, so I thought I'd share some wisdom, knowledge, my thoughts. Uh, so um, yeah, uh, so yeah, let's uh, talk about some of the things that you can do now that you've applied and you're pretty much um, playing the waiting game. And just because I'm really, really thirsty uh, and um, I just wanted to make this a bit more informal, I made myself some tea. So I hope you guys will join me in this little sort of tea time chat. Um, I'm drinking ginger tea because as you can see from the decorations here, the, uh, the weather's changing in fall. Uh, is it fast approaching? I don't know. Uh, where I am in Japan, the colors haven't really changed yet and Although the weather has gone down, it's still quite um, pleasantly warm. So, anyways, that's besides the point. Okay, uh, so you've applied to the JET program, yay you, and now you're waiting and you're like, ugh, what do I do with all this time? There's actually a lot you could do. First off, I highly, highly recommend getting a head start on Japanese classes. Um, maybe you already speak Japanese, maybe you've already taken classes, good for you, this advice is not for you. Uh, this is for everyone who um, doesn't speak any Japanese or is just super, super, super beginner level. Um, you don't obviously need Japanese skills to do this program, but listen, your life will be so much um, more um, joyful and fulfilled, fulfilled in Japan, if you at least get a bit of a head start on learning Japanese. So I would say focus on communication first, speaking and understanding what's being said back to you uh, versus writing. Uh, of course, writing is very important and you'll definitely wanna be able to read some simple things when you get here, but um, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming if you're just starting out and quite frankly, the, the first thing you're going to need is to be able to say things and understand when people um, answer. So I would say focus on that first. Don't psych yourself out. Uh, learning Japanese I find is quite easy. It's not um, difficult to speak, like the sounds of the language aren't complex. Um, and grammar wise, I mean, of course, you can get into all the, you know, um, uh, all the fine tuning of a language, but on a very basic level, I mean, it's, you sent in your application, I assume November, um, and say you're, you're hopefully chosen, you would leave in July. That would give you November to July of Japanese classes, guys, that's amazing. Um, you could make so much progress, you don't even know, so, don't psych yourself out ahead of time because this is a new language and it might seem difficult. Um, definitely get on that. Um, Christmas will be coming around soon, so great time to ask for um, classes from family and friends as a gift. Not a bad idea. Of course, you can learn on your own. Um, uh, you can you know, do things online. You can actually go to classes. Uh, if you're really serious about learning Japanese, which you should be before coming here. Um, you know, try keeping classes maybe to at least twice a week. Um, like that, you know, in between you'll be doing homework and that'll be a nice routine to get into. And I know you maybe you're finishing up school or you have a job or you're really busy. That's okay. Do what you can. That's what's important. Uh, commit to it though. You know, like if you can only do once a week, it's fine. Do once a week, but make sure you do that once a week. Um, the reality when you arrive in Japan is that you'll most likely be um, in a small town or even if you're in a bigger city, uh, not everyone speaks English. Shocking, I know. Um, your supervisor might not speak any 
like nada, zero English, your English teachers, how ironic, your English teachers, at least for elementary school, may not master English very well either. Uh, long story about why that is, it's not important to this video. Um, so yeah, you might want to be able to just have a basic conversation with them. Um, and I think you'll just find that um, when you arrive here, you, you may not feel as overwhelmed with everything going on if you've at least got that down, the language part. Um, because yeah, I mean, arriving here can be quite overwhelming. You may also find yourself living um, alone or isolated from other ALTs, other JETs. Um, you may be fortunate enough to be with a bunch of them, which is great. Uh, but yeah, listen, learn some Japanese. Uh, it's fun. Um, it's cool. And it'll definitely help you um, arrive here and adjust to life in Japan. So that would be my number one recommendation while you're waiting for an answer. Get started on those Japanese classes. It's a good idea. Number two. But first I'm going to have a sip because I'm really thirsty. Mm. Oh, that's good. Yes. Number two. This is one that you will find out about once you're accepted and you start doing orientation and you, if you start like delving into the blogs and stuff, but finances. I think it's something that's important to discuss now. While you're waiting for an answer, very important. Here's why. A lot of the JETs um, that do this program that I've seen uh, generally are recent graduates. Uh, of course, you have people like myself who are, have been working professionals. That's a different story. Uh, but for everyone who's a very recent grad, um, get your finances in order. It's kind of more of a serious topic, less woo fun, but um, you'll find out that like when you arrive here, it's really good to have at least $3,000 worth of cash, in cash, with you. Um, we were recommended between 2000 to 5000 depending on our comfort level and you know where we're going to be living, etc, etc. Why do you need about $3,000 cash when you arrive here? Well, one, Japan is a very cash-based society, so you may not be able to use your credit card. So, you know, if, if anything, you need mad money for something quickly, you have it. Secondly, when you arrive, you're not going to get paid for the first month. Um, so that's one month, no money. And think about it, you're going to have to buy groceries, all your basic necessities, but you may also have to pay like two months of rent up front. Uh, you may have just gotten a car. Yeah, a car. Uh, and you're going to have fees to pay with that and taxes and you'll have to start paying like fuel. Uh, and one month is a long time. You know, you're settling in. You probably are going to want to do activities as well with other jets. You're going to want to go out. Um, you will definitely, uh, of course, when you arrive, you'll be in Tokyo. So there's a couple evenings that you may want to spend out. Just having that amount of money um, is good for security. And honestly, like 100%, you'll have money left over from... from from the 3000 that you brought because I mean living expenses aren't that crazy um, but you know put that in the bank and you never know if something should happen if you need um, to buy a new air conditioner because when you're gonna arrive here it's gonna be really really hot um, that's for everyone who arrives in August uh, so get your finances in order make sure you have that amount of money uh, when you leave I I personally don't think that this topic was well covered. It really didn't affect me at all. Uh, again, like I said, I was a working professional, so I had savings aside and, and that was totally fine. But um, some people that I knew, you know, they were recent grads and I feel like people just telling them like, well, yeah, ask your parents. What kind of an answer is that? You know, um, not everyone has family to rely on and not everyone's family has like all this cash lying around. So um, get started now. And if you don't have that exact amount, again, don't freak out. Just start saving, uh, is really what I'm saying. Start saving. This is a good, you know, practice for life in general outside of the JET program. You should be saving, if you can, anyways. Um, you are also going to have pre-departure costs. Um, you're probably going to have extra suitcases. You probably will, because you're going to be bringing a lot of stuff. Um, you may be buying, you know, like stuff for travel, like pillows. You may be buying extra clothing that you didn't think you needed. Um, in my case, if you have 
uh, long sized feet uh, you may be buying like a bunch of shoes and bringing a bunch of shoes because you're not going to find your size here yay so yeah there's going to be a lot of kind of um, surprise costs that you may not have factored in um, gifts that you're going to want to bring so yeah make sure that you know by July next year you have about three thousand dollars set aside and um, you know you'll you'll be you know peace of mind at that time So yeah, those are the first two things. Learn Japanese, start saving. And then the third one, um, it, it's maybe a bit less concrete per se, but um, the third one I would say is start doing things that get you out of your comfort zone. So, I mean, obviously you're applying to this program, so you're someone who definitely uh, wants to have a new adventure, you want to experience something different, maybe you've traveled before, maybe you haven't. Um, but the reason I say get out of your comfort zone is, you know, when you arrive here, it's going to be very, very different. Um, even if you're um, prepared a lot, like if, if I take myself for an example, again, I had a decent amount of work experience behind me. So, you know, starting a new job, meeting new people, getting into that kind of routine. I've experienced that several times. Um, still, you have to go through it. Um, traveled, I've traveled a lot. Um, and, you know, been in countries where I, I can't necessarily speak the language. I've also lived on my own before. All those things I'd already done, and yet, you know, arriving here, there's still gonna be an adjustment period. So, um, you know, just like something silly, like maybe start doing things on your own. Uh, again, I cannot stress this enough, you don't know where you're gonna be placed. Um, and I know in your application, you put like, you have a choice of like, oh, three cities that you can request. Chances are you won't get placed there. I'm just saying, okay? Um, the process for picking and choosing candidates, again, separate topic, not gonna get into it now. Um, but yes, so you might end up in an area, again, where you're really fortunate um, to be with a bunch of other people. You may not enjoy their company. That's also a possibility. I mean, I don't wanna be negative. I'm just trying to lay out the reality of what it's like doing this program. Or you may, like myself, end up kind of far from everyone else. Fortunately, um, again, I, I do enjoy um, spending time with myself uh, and I've, I've had extensive practice, so it hasn't been a problem, but maybe for some of you watching, this is not any of the experiences you've had up to date. So like, go to a movie, go to the theater, go watch, I don't know, go do like a road trip. Just do something like from now till July, maybe once a month regularly on your own. Just get used to the ha to that habit. Um, and also when I say do something out of your comfort zone, I mean like um, a great thing to start would be if in your town there's a local Japanese community, go there. Go to their community center, go find out what events are going on, start going to those things. Uh, one, it's going to be a great way for you to get in touch uh, with your future life here in Japan. Um, it's going to get, it's going to be a great way to practice, number one, if you started learning Japanese. Um, and I mean, it's definitely going to be out of your comfort zone because you haven't done that before. Um, I just, you know, these are just tips that I think will help to transition for when you come here, just ease, ease into your life here. And um, because, yeah, you definitely are going to be out of your comfort zone. The work culture is very different. The language is different. Everything is different. Um, and, you know, you're here to have a good time. You're here to have a good experience. You don't want to let those things uh, weigh you down or stress you um, too much. I mean, you know, it's normal to be stressed a little. But, you know, you're here to experience living in Japan. You're here to, you know, talk about your culture. Um, so, you know, you want to focus on all the positive things. Those things that could be a bit more negative, try and deal with them now. Try to sort of build up that character while you're at home, while you're in your comfort zone. Um, a really great aspect of doing this is that you can play the local tourist. I highly, highly recommend this because when you arrive here, um, you're going to have to do, till you're blue in the face, uh, what they call Jiko Shokai, which is your self-intro presentation. And if you start playing the local tourist in your town, you're going to have so much photos and pictures that you're gonna be able to share with everyone and trust me people are really gonna love it here in Japan to see what your daily life is like so it's two birds with one stone you know um, you get used to doing things on your own going out of your comfort zone and um, you know you start building up a bunch of resources for when you arrive so that's number three number four uh, I had it in my head what was I gonna say oh my god 
Oh, I hate when that happens. I should have written it down. That would have been smart. Um, number four, number four. Oh, yes. This kind of goes back to what I was saying with the local tourist thing. Enjoy the time you have. So I know for myself, uh, when I handed in my application, it was already November and I come from Canada. So, you know, we're entering like the, the dark period. Winter is definitely coming and um, it's just kind of a depressing um, three, four, five months. Um, luckily, you know, I, I, I got an answer in January uh, for an interview, for an interview. So um, while you're waiting, I maybe your mind is already, you know, thinking about your future life in Japan, what it's going to be like, and try and live a little bit in the moment. Um, I know this sounds very like snotty and superior, but what I mean by this is like, I mean, this is your home. Hopefully for most of you, you do enjoy where you live and where you come from. Um, and you know, just enjoy these moments because you're, if you're lucky enough to be accepted, you'll be in Japan for a year, two, three, four, five. Um, you may even stay upwards of five years um, and you know there's things that eventually you'll miss so like soak it in, take it in, uh, live in the present, really enjoy um, all the stuff you have back home and um, again it sort of ties in with playing the local tourist thing because um, you know it'll just give you a bunch of stuff to exchange with people when you get here. So okay that's four things, uh, learn Japanese, your finances, um, uh, you know go out of your comfort zone, enjoy the moment and um, the fifth one, was I going to give a fifth one? Mm. Oh yes, most importantly. Okay, maybe you've already started um, delving into all the blogs and, and YouTube videos and everything that exists about the JET program. And if you have, that's great. You know, it's already giving you an insight into what this future life of yours is going to be like. Um, but since this is the early stages, I want to mentally prepare you for the reality of this program. In my case, uh, I was already quite realistic as to what this program was like. I was already quite realistic. That makes no sense. But you know what I'm saying. Uh, I was already fairly um, knowledgeable of, of the realities of the program, the positives, the negatives, etc, etc. Um, and maybe uh, a few of you have applied um, thinking like you're going to change the world and you're going to change all these children's lives and you're going to teach them English and like, you know, within a week they're going to be these amazing speakers and oh my god, it's, you know, it's going to be so fulfilling. Okay. It is fulfilling. Um, I teach in five different schools. It's really great to see the students that are motivated um, speak and exchange with you. Even the students that are less motivated, you can always find an opportunity to sort of connect with them. Um, and, and those moments are quite rare um, but very precious when they do happen. Um, so all the things that I said about um, you know changing the world, changing someone's life, teaching English, they're true. But you know take this with a grain of salt. Personally I think that the biggest positive aspect of the JET program is cultural exchange. I really think that that is the number one thing about this program, more so than even teaching English. Why? Um, you have to deal with a whole curriculum and a whole system that is totally independent of you, of the teachers here, and you will quickly realize that, you know, having to work within that framework, it, it's not what you might have thought before coming. Um, so I'm not trying to rain on your parade and I'm definitely not trying to cast a cloud over um, uh, over this program or, or over why you decided to do it. What I am saying is if you can sort of mentally prepare yourself for that shift. This program is about a cultural exchange first, teaching second. Um, that's just my opinion. Maybe other people have different opinions and of course everyone's experience here is very different. Um, so I recommend, you know, again, looking at other people's YouTube videos, checking out blogs. Um, the reason that I say this is, again, for myself, I was, I was very much aware of this so it wasn't really a shock. But I do know some people, they arrive here and, you know, they've spent months months, maybe even years, um, thinking, oh, I'm going to come to Japan and I'm going to change things and, you know, I'm going to teach English. It's going to be so amazing. And then 
it's not that it's not amazing, it's just going to be probably very different than the picture you made up in your head and you may become frustrated and depressed. And again, you don't need that. Okay, you're here to have a great experience, you're here to enjoy Japan, and you're here to be a cultural ambassador. And, um, I need a sip. <laughs> Given that Japan is an ice island nation, they are quite isolated. They're a very sort of homogenous cultural group. Um, again, I'm, I'm generalizing, but you know, um, it, it's really good. It's good for them to see different people from all different walks of life with different interests. Um, you know, also different people speaking English because we're not all from this like American TV show that that's probably um, the, the only vision they've ever had of foreigners. So um, yeah, try and dissociate this program from this concept that you're gonna change Japan or some kid's life through the magic of English and try and, you know, channel that idea into the fact that um, you will change certain people's lives um, by being the cultural ambassador that you are. And I think if you can enter and start this program in that frame of mind, again, you'll see that when you arrive and you have to adapt and you start with your life here, it'll be definitely um, a lot easier and a lot less stressful. So those are my five tips. Learn Japanese. Prepare your finances. Um, what did I say? Uh, not live in the moment. Oh yeah, go out of your comfort zone. Live in the moment and you know really understand what this program is about. So if you do all, if you start doing all these things now, you know you've okay, you've just sent your application and you start doing these five things, you're gonna be so prepared uh, once January hits and you get that interview um, opportunity, and then March, April's gonna hit, and then you know you got in and then before you know it it's gonna be July and you're gonna be on your way to Japan so um, I'm pretty sure uh, you have maybe um, other ideas or opinions about it I'd love to hear your feedback um, because like I said you know there's so many different people from all walks of life doing this program so please leave your feedback please subscribe to my channel if you liked um, this video I have other videos uh, of my daily life here and um, I've also put my Instagram link in the description box and um, yeah you know hope hopefully everyone watching this who applied to the program gets a positive answer and uh, you know 2018 is your year see you